Fish in Canada, brought to you in part by Stearns, the life jacket experts. Ram trucks, nothing works harder than a Ram. Castrol, more than just oil, it's liquid engineering. U.S. Real, when performance means everything. And Radio World, ask the experts at radioworld.ca. Back in the day, fresh fish and wild game was the meal of choice while out in the wilderness, but food like that spoiled too quick. The main staple for a convenient meal was a satchel full of dried fruits and nuts or a slab of salted pork. Not the most appealing of meals, but <laughs> it'd keep for a few days without spoiling. I must admit, I had my fair share of gut rot out in the woods, and it sure made me wish I'd have never left home. Coleman has a solution for keeping food fresh on the road. It's the Extreme Wheeled Cooler, which goes anywhere you do, making transporting your fresh food and ice cold drinks a breeze. Now, spending a week in the wilderness is a cinch, as the Coleman Extreme Cooler keeps ice for up to five full days. Visit ColemanCanada.ca for more outdoor solutions. Back, bit more, come back, come back, perfect. So, what's the connection here? Well, I could tell you that most firefighters are fishing nuts, that would be true. Or I could tell you that Pete and I have been looking for a quicker way to get our boat in the water without getting a speeding ticket, that would also be true. But the real truth of the matter is that this episode probably would not have been possible were it not for the courageous efforts of hundreds of firefighters like these guys. In May of 2011, a wildfire burned through the town of Slave Lake, Alberta, causing the evacuation of over 7,000 residents. Now, as usually the case in a natural disaster, numerous unsung heroes stepped up to the plate. In this case, a group of firefighters pooled their hard work ethic to say what essentially could have been a total disaster. Slave Lake, Alberta, a small town situated 280 kilometers north of Edmonton, can now unfortunately be deemed as the town with the second costliest disaster in Canadian history. An estimated $700 million in damages was caused when an out of control fire being pushed by 100 kilometer per hour winds swept through the town on May 15th, 2011. How did the fire affect the fishing? Well, that's a question that Ange and I are determined to answer. It had certainly affected the wildlife that lived in the surrounding forest. That's a given. But are the walleye affected in any way? We had never encountered anything like that before. And, and having come up here and fished some tournaments since the fire has happened, it's nice to see that the lake is open, the fish are still there, business is happening, and now they just want people to come back. Our hopes are high on this world-class walleye lake. We've heard numerous reports as to the massive quantities of fish. 20 to 30 fish days are average here. Per person, that is. Whoa. That's crazy. That's a fishery not too many lakes can rival. Get her on, Pete. You got him. You got him. Trolling your jig setup? Trolling this jig I'm setup. I'm gonna put my rod down and I'm gonna get a fish. What? Well, that's a nice walleye. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Step on your seat if you don't mind, sir. That's a nice, colorful fish. Nice and bright. That's a good looking fish yeah. right there. Yeah. That's a good looking Alberta wall. I think. On that chartreuse uh, zipper. Nicely done. One thing I will give them here in this province about their barbless hooks, they do come out nice though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good looking fish. Dude. Yeah. Nice one. Yeah. Off we go, young let's man. Catch, uh, let's catch 40 or 50 each of those today. How's that? Sounds like a deal. We'll have some fun. The conditions are perfect. Overcast skies with a possible storm on the horizon. It's walleye time. Double. Nice, small. Where do all these waves come from? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're fishing the wave pattern. Uh, oh, you know what? You got a good one? No, but, it, well, I, I hate saying, I, I don't want to say that anymore. Yours isn't it? Mine's a wee one. Mine's a little wee one too. We got two wee one double headers. Boy, I'll tell you what, Alberta's the province known for double headers though, isn't it? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> no kidding, I've never eh? double header walleye in my life. Nice lake. Double, double header kings. Oh. Speedster. Giant? Oh yeah. Cool. 
As our day progressed, the looming storm on the horizon crept closer and closer. We decided to call it a day and get a fresh start the next morning. Hey, Doc Beachy here, may I help you? That one, buddy. Hey, I just released mine. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I could have had a double header. Good man. <laughs> not like that's not uncommon in Alberta, eh? No kidding. Tons of them. You need a net? Uh, not sure yet, buddy. No, I think he's a twin. Oh, no, that's net worthy for sure. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'll let you get him on your side there. Oh, yeah. Bring him in. That's a little better. There he's getting go. there. Thank you. Okay, we're sitting Boy, this right spot, on. The spot held for us. Oops. Isn't that wild? Yeah. That is wild for sure. Oh, he's fighting you good. Holy cow. I should have you know, left, left him in the water a little like longer. You. Yeah, we're getting there. That's a little better. Good look, nice light Boy. color to him. Yeah, no real dark patches on the backs or anything. Yeah. I think he's talking to you, buddy. Oh, buddy. And them chompers, beat there. Eh? <gasps> oh, you would do that. <laughs> Not gonna happen. <laughs> nice. It didn't take long for us to pick up where we left off yesterday. I've got a feeling that this place is yet another Alberta walleye factory. Lesser Slave is essentially two large deep areas connected by narrows. Areas like this one usually are a sure thing when it comes to walleye fishing. Throughout the season, somewhere in this vicinity, there will always be fish. You got one, Andy? I saw that one hit your rod, actually. <laughs> Poppy slack light. You saw that light, the wrangle like that, didn't you? Yeah. The rod just yeah. dropped. How are we looking? Oh, he's coming forward. That's right. usually a good sign. Yeah, usually like that. Uh, yeah. It's a little better, I think, isn't it? Nah. Not really, no. No. Just a, maybe a touch bigger. They're clones, eh? Come on, bud. Thank you. <laughs> he is bigger. Is he? Look at that popped off. Not by much, but he's got a bigger head. Yeah, that's good. If we could pound on a bunch you of know, them all. Yeah, if, if those were uh, were an average, that would be great, eh? Little guy. Little big guy. Nice and solid. That fish is nice. And he's and got thick. a bit of a gut on him, too. Yeah. That's that's a good. That's what I mean. He's yeah. thick. Yeah. That's. Nice more job, like buddy. It. You know, he hit, he hit a little different, too, right? Yeah. You could just feel it. One little tug. He pushed the bait forward a bit, yeah. and, then, and you just and then he was there. Him. Yeah, that's a nice thing about trolling crankbaits. Eh? I mean, you usually you really get a great yeah. feel, right? Yeah, you can feel the bait working, and then you can feel that when he slack lines you or whatever. Yeah, it's nice. Belly to belly. Yes, sir. One at a time. To get to Lester Slave Lake, we first flew from Toronto to Edmonton, Alberta. We left the city and drove north on 44. Next, we took Highway 2 northwest through the town of Slave Lake and ended up at the Real End Resort in the town of Faust. To survive the outdoors, you first have to prepare yourself for the onslaught of biting insects that can cause itchy bumps and rashes and even deadly diseases. The northern reaches of Canada are famous for two things, great fishing and bugs. Most would say Camarno, Manitoba is the worst place for mosquitoes. Even the town's mascot is a replica of one of these giant bloodthirsty creatures. As a matter of fact, the name Komarno means mosquito in Ukrainian. However, the real bug experts refer to Churchill, Manitoba as arguably the worst place in Canada for mosquitoes. Here, they breed in enormous numbers, estimated at 12.5 million bugs per hectare. Now, luckily for those living in or thinking of visiting these places, the onslaught can be avoided by wearing a repellent that contains DEET, like muscal, repulsive since 1951. Now that we've experienced Lesser Slave's incredible walleye fishery, we can better understand why people like Prince Craft Pro Staffer Corey Nault speak so highly of it. It's an amazing fishery in that it wouldn't be unusual to handle a hundred fish in a day. I don't think the rest of Canada thinks of us as a fishing destination, and, and I think they should. Whoa! Whoa. I heard that one. You heard that one? I heard that, that brother. <laughs> right here at the boat, buddy. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah, you just smacked me right at the boat. I'm tying up. You're on your own. Yeah, I'm fine. Get him. Nets Megan, here. good and small. Ah, you haven't really seen him, but I can tell you he's going to be net worthy. Now, a little bit bigger than normal, but not huge. Good. Jumping out of your net. Hey, that's a nice one. Yeah. That's a that's real nice one. Now, 
Boy, I'll tell you, you get a bunch of those. That's a perfect one right there. Ooh. Good job. On your top hook? No, nope, bottom one. It fell right out, eh? Yeah. No, the top one fell out. Bottom one's still in. He had them both in there. He got them both. He said, I'm taking both. Give it all to me. That's a hungry Walter. Give it all to me. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> the thing about um, here on this lake, you know, Corey Nault was telling us, the Princecraft guy, is that we hit Calling Lake, and it was amazing fishing in Alberta, right, yeah. this year. Oh, yeah. But he says that's a very small window. We hit it perfect. The thing about this lake, Lesser Slave Lake, is that these the fish are season. available the whole season, and you'll catch tons of them wow. all, all year. So there's, it's probably a better numbers lake here, obviously. And, for and in this. terms of fishing it, I mean, it's a fairly simple fishery. You don't have to contend with uh, weed lines and boulders and humps and points. I mean, these fish are just sitting on these vast flats. That, You're not really snagging uh, up or anything, are you? Not, no, you're no, it's anything. nice. That's fun. It is a blast. Now, if you go. Bottom bouncers and rigs with walking sinkers and worms, along with a jig and drop shot combo, seem to work best for us in these Alberta walleye. When the bite would slow down, we'd actually pick up our speed just a bit and drag a crankbait for something different. Remember, always experiment when the fish ask for it. Yeah, did you change the baits? I got one right by the boat. Have you? Yeah. Size? Uh, don't know yet. Let me know if you need a hand. I'm here for you, buddy. I know you are. See if I can work them in, train them in. Boy, that's a pile of fish that size, though, eh? Yep. A pile. Throw them back. Whip Absolute them back. pile. So it does, oh, look at who's coming over to see if I. Oh, buddy's hurt coming, that eh? Fish. <laughs> buddy's coming. You say, how about me? You forgot about me. If a guy's got a fish that's caught too deep, these pelicans must probably come back after that fish yeah. has floated up to the top. And I mean, a bird that big would eat a fish that big like nothing. He's used to the odd. He look, wow, he's looking look around this. now for that fish to come back up. Look at the size of that bird. That is amazing. Got to beat. Good stuff. That was on the, uh, on the faster back. Actually, I was even pumping it forward when he hit. Come here, buddy. Oh, oh, the pelican's flying in it yet. Look at this. Oh, oh my he said God. That. He said, I'm not oh swimming on God. this one. Look at this. He was trying to swim at oh, first. Man. I saw him paddling away, and then he said, the heck he with that. He cruised in awesome. I mean, so many people would be happy catching 30 of those. Oh. You know? How many people Absolutely. couldn't be happy catching 30 of those fish? What a gold mine Ooh. up here. I just get a bumper, and I just get a bottom. The pelican's mad at you now. Angelo, yes, sir. I'm going to program one guy's tying up their baits, the other guy gets a fish. Yeah, let me guess, you got a fish on. <laughs> I like the way this guy's holding down. Oh, yeah? Maybe we'll get another Better? Half. Maybe. He's, he's definitely not a 12-incher. That's the thing. It's hard to say on a big lake like this. I mean, you're just as apt to run into a 7 or 8-pounder as you are these 2s and 3s, eh? They say a 10 on this lake is, is a giant, though, right? I, I wonder why. It's weird because the lake is so big. I mean, look at it. They were saying it's like 235 foot. This is a good fish. Is I it? I think. He's fighting like a good fish. I just had a pike bite me off, so I don't want to oh, burst you. your bubble, but I just had a pike that's bite a me off. Water. That's a nice walleye. Yeah. Yeah. That's better. That's what we're came up here for. Let me get him up here for you quick. Drag him in. And then there you go. Yeah. yeah. That's better. That's better. <laughs> Let me do that Thank just you. to be on the safe side. Good. Oh, he just dropped off too. Nice. It's the barbless stuff for you. Nice. That's what. That's the size right yeah, there. Yeah, you're liking those. Liking those a lot. Consistent batch of those would be big fun. Big chubby cheeks on them. Oh, you like to eat them, wouldn't oh, you? Major eating right there. <laughs> major. Speaking mm -hmm. of eating, I think this is the size that uh, you're allowed to keep one of these fish. Yeah, it could be. Uh, and I think that's that's considered a, a keepable fish. So that would go in the frying pan. Although for the life of me, I don't understand why those smaller yeah. ones were. Yeah. It would be a lot tastier, but look at that. That is nice. I nice job, it. buddy. Alberta gold right there. Yeah, baby. Whoa, easy mama. Crazy fish. Don't hit my jig. Well, always gonna get back <laughs> on your hook. <laughs> I love it. So yeah. that's the pattern. One guy has to be tying up. One one line on the water only. It's yeah. confusing to the fish. Yeah. See. yeah. Okay. That's We're on to awesome. it. At Fishing Canada, when we're on the road producing and shooting your favorite fishing shows, we need a truck that can double as an office on wheels. We spend so much time on the road that our truck becomes our command center. We rely on the Uconnect system to keep us entertained, allow us to communicate, navigate, and even surf the web. 
the integrated multimedia system has a large touchscreen with easy to use features like a DVD player, enhanced GPS, and satellite radio. The available Uconnect Wi-Fi works with any of our Wi-Fi enabled devices from as far as 100 feet away, and we don't even need any special software or external antennas. At Fishing Canada, we need a truck that can get the job done right. And that's why this ramp is perfect. Walleye fishermen know the full potential of using live bait. In most conditions, minnows, worms, and leeches will ultimately outperform all other presentations, but not always. Two of the absolute best options for walleye baits are either jigs tipped with heavily scented plastics or crankbaits. With the jig, don't just go with the same old curly tail grub. Veer off the path and try one of the many minnow or shad imitations that are available today. The same goes for hard baits. Long slender minnow baits are commonplace among walleye experts, but short, fat, shad style bodies can sometimes save the day. Alternative options are also available when it comes to engine oil. In fact, there's a great new premium synthetic oil that takes lubricants to a whole new level. New Castrol Edge is engineered with an advanced formula that provides performance and protection in extreme conditions, such as towing, hauling, high and low temperatures, rapid acceleration, and stop and go traffic. Castrol Edge is simply Castrol's strongest and best oil ever. And what are you doing, you tying up? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's our good luck. You got what odd, right? One guy gets out of the question <laughs> and the other guy... Yeah, it's usually me doing the tie it up. It. Good one? Uh, um, I can't tell. No, he's our typical. He's our typical walleye. He's prototypical? We will catch... Prototypical? God, we've already caught it. Lesser how many. slave? <laughs> how many of these have we caught today? And it's still early. Ugh. Unreal. Unbelievable of course, fishery. a couple of nice bonuses of fishing up here is that you've got daylight for God knows how oh. long. It seems like every day is a week long. It's awesome for it's, that. Which is great yeah. for, for folks who come up to fish. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we got up at quarter to six this morning. It was yeah. pure light. Yeah. And you can fish till 10 or 10.30 at night if you want. So you can <laughs> you can put the longest day of your life out here and catch fish all day long. This is midday right now, and we're popping them. Wow. Are you getting any in that top hook or very many? Nah, uh, maybe one out of every three yep. is at the top. There's just a gazillion fish. If we seem a little bit less, <laughs> look at this. If we seem a little bit less emotional than we normally would be during an episode, it's because there are so many fish here that after a while, you just kind of expect every yeah. drop of a jig to have a fish on yep. it. But it's, this is about as exciting as it gets, let me tell you. This is awesome. Did One you? man in, the other man in. Good God. It's unbelievable. That's great, man. Let's see if I can hook up before that one comes in. Perfect. Good idea. We get a quintuple, quadruple, <laughs> hoople, mata hoople. <laughs> That's right behind header. you. And get on in. Sister, wow, let's just keep that net rolling. We should have brought that ticker that we wanted to bring out <laughs> to count them in. <laughs> yeah, go. She took off easy. Wow, unreal. Uh, I love it. This is so oh, much fun. This is so not? much fun. There you go. There, you see? <laughs> how can you not love how this? How can you not love that? I'm going in again, but there's the net right beside you. Oh, man. <laughs> now, could you imagine if all these fish were just a, a tad larger? Oh, God. Like and another pound? You know maybe? what? There's probably days you find them. You find oh, that I'm right sure school. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. You get in that school, it's just uh, With a population a... of fish this healthy, yeah. it, it's bound to happen that you yeah. get into a school of three pounders, four pounders. Oh. Oh my God! How much fun! No and you get wonder. Them trolling, casting, whatever you want to do, too, right? So. No wonder they have those big tournaments here. Well, yeah, the fishery is amazing. God, it really is unbelievable. It's the only way I can describe it. Alberta gold, people. This is what it's all about. Yes, it there is. There it is. <laughs> We're gold mining. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is just constant bite going on. Good. I'm worried about a gator coming in, though, eh? Yeah, it'd be nice to see a big gator come up and take one of those. <laughs> you gotta be honest. See, as cruel as that may sound, that would be the best. 
Um, Court is saying there's there's 20 plus pound pike out here. A lot of them. Eh? I'm surprised we haven't made contact with anything. Yeah, we get that. the small ones. Here you go. Thank you. Oh, wow. Oh, there goes the jig. Beautiful. I won't even touch that guy. Another beaut. Look at that. Wow. That's just four fish in a row. Bang, 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 bang. Bye, buddy. Wow, amazing. At what point do we quit? Well, when we gotta fly home. <laughs> Once the planes are leaving the runway. At what point do you quit? That's the toughest decision. Well, as you can probably tell, the devastation of the Slave Lake fire certainly didn't seem to affect the walleye fishing on Lesser Slave Lake. And in fact, we found that for the most part, it's business as usual. You really should do yourself and the community a favor and book a trip to this walleye factory. It'll help both the economy <laughs> and your thirst for loads of action. Did you know that not all aluminum boats are made of the same thing? In fact, when comparing the difference between aluminum boats, the biggest difference is the grade of aluminum used. And at Princecraft, they take this to a whole new level. In general, there are two types of marine aluminum with several grade differences. 6081 is very rigid stock, but has weak anti-corrosive properties. 5052, on the other hand, has excellent anti-corrosive properties and more flex, making it the best choice in marine aluminum. Most manufacturers use the 5052 series with H32 hardness as a standard. More reputable manufacturers use the H34 grade, but very few use the ultimate H36 grade, which is 25% harder and more difficult to bend. Because Princecraft uses special form and treatment methods, it's one of the few manufacturers able to use H36 aluminum for the construction of their boats. The H36 grade provides uniform strength and durability, making Princecraft boats second to none. The folks at Princecraft know what it takes to build a better boat, without sacrificing comfort, safety, and of course, fishability. Today's hotspot is a flat near the Narrows that separate the two large sections of Lesser Slave Lake. The waypoint on your screen will get you there. This is an area that needs lots of searching, since the fish will not sit in one specific spot for very long. Typical of a flat, this area has groups of walleye moving in and out at different times. Try trolling spinners tipped with worms or walleye-style crankbaits. Remember to vary your speeds. For more hotspots like this one, go to fishingcanada.com. Fish in Canada, brought to you in part by Coleman, the outdoor company. Muscal, repulsive since 1951. Prince Craft Boats, the more you know, the better we look. Mercury Outboards, number one on the water. And Sail, the outdoor superstore.